And hello everybody, it is 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's a hair, oh, now it's 2 o'clock, um, 2 o'clock in the afternoon in my time zone, this is Nick McPhee, Unhindered by Coding, um, where I am continuing to develop Rust skills, hopefully, by uh, applying Rust in a bunch of different settings, including, at the moment, we're going through the advent of code problems from last month. Um, and we are up to part way into the first part of day four of the advent of code. So we're going to continue that at the moment. Uh, so what is the problem and where did we leave off on, uh, Wednesday? So the problem is, or actually I should have started with the problem here. So skipping all the faff about elves and islands and stuff. The problem is we're, we're given an input that's got pairs of ranges. And our job is to figure out if one of the ranges completely contains another range in a given pair. So here, for example, is it here? Uh, here. Um, here, three through seven is completely inside of two through eight. Um, and here, six through six is completely inside of four through six. So our goal is to count how many assignment pairs where one range fully contains the other range. Okay. Um, and we had gotten into it uh, on Wednesday and made actually some pretty reasonable progress. Um, now I think with a little luck, we should be able to finish this up and then also move on to part two fairly quickly. Um, one thing I'll comment on is I had originally written this. I'm going to close this for now where um, if there was an overlap in a line, then, and the question mark is there because my overlaps is gonna return a result type, um, then I wanted to increment the current count, otherwise I didn't wanna increment the current count. Um, uh, and this is in a tri-fold, actually, and this was a neat suggestion from, I think this is also from Nathaniel Bumpo, um, I'd had some problems with some of the earlier uh, exercises where I had thing I was mapping typically or summing, doing some kind of iterator uh, processing, and my closure wanted to potentially return a uh, result or option type, and I wanted to question mark that out, but I couldn't because it was inside a closure and you couldn't question mark out past whatever your operator was, your map or your sum. And Nathaniel Bumpo uh, pointed me at trifold, which is actually very cool because it will catch a uh, something that sends a result out, um, an error, and then propagate that air out through the trifold out into the rest of the world. Um, so here, trifold um, takes a closure that returns in our instance a result type. And if that returns an error, then trifold will propagate that air out. Um, and that's nifty and swell, and that makes me happy. Um, and the downside is we end up having to do kind of the mapping and the counting at the same time. Whereas if we weren't using this, we could map um, entries to either zero or one and then use dot sum to uh, add them all up. Here we end up doing both of these things. And I had, if there was an overlap then we added one to the current count, which is the first argument into trifold. Otherwise, our current count just remained the same. And the other suggestion Nathaniel Bumpo had was using this from 
because overlaps line returns a result wrapping a bool. Question mark gets rid of the result. And uh, if the result was an error, propagates the error out through the trifold. If it wasn't an error, and, and this, this is the kind of question mark you can't have if you use like a map um, or a filter. You can't have a question mark that comes out of those um, operators. So if we have, uh, but with trifold, we can do that. So we get the result type, question mark turns that into a Boolean. Um, and so in my version, I was testing that Boolean with just a classic if, and Nathaniel Bumpo's suggestion was instead convert that Boolean to a U size and then add it. And the, the trick as it were here is that a Boolean maps to a U size in exactly the way we need it to for this problem. A, zero, a false becomes zero and a true becomes one. Um, and that's great because we, we're adding a one if overlaps was true, and we're essentially adding a zero if overlaps was false. So we can just do this addition step here. And <clears throat> that, and when I first, when he first proposed it, I was sort of like, oh, do I really want to do that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it seemed a little weedy and read-only kind of um, coding, and that didn't seem awesome. Um, and I, in the end, after thinking about it some more, decided, actually, I don't object. I think that this is a reasonable thing to do, um, and I'm going to go ahead and leave it. I want to uh, leave the credit. Um, so thanks to Nathaniel Bumpo for um, pointing out that we can use U size from to convert from a oops a boolean to a u size in exactly the desired way so that was actually kind of nifty um and then i'm going to get rid of this so we're just going to like leave it there um because that seems to be totally fine um Let's see, I'm gonna do something quick that may, um, yeah, I think life is good. Okay, just wanted to make sure that the stream was doing the right thing, um, but it seems to be fine. Okay, so let's continue the problem. So we, we're converting the input file into contents, we're using lines, to uh, parse out individual lines of the input. So, oops, not that input. We want day four input. Where is day four input? There we go. We, so each line becomes a separate um, value. And then this trifold is going to call overlaps on lines and return a bool uh, depending. Uh, and Overlaps is splitting the line at the delimiter comma. So this is using split once, which I don't think I'd ever used before, that returns. Uh, it's, it's good if you have a single place where you need to split. And it returns an option with a pair of the values that you're after. Um, and so in our case, we want to split exactly on the comma um, so that we get the two ranges. And so split once does exactly that. Um, and split once returns an option. I want to be able to question mark to get the error case to sort of propagate up um, and not have to deal with it. Um, you can't question mark a option when what you're supposed to return is a result. 
Um, but the anyhow with context allows me to uh, convert essentially the option to a result type. Um, so we do with context and we say there was no comma in this particular line. That gives us a result type so we can question mark that result type. And now uh, we have the first string and the second string. Um, so that's nifty and swell. Now I wanna take those two strings and I wanna convert them to um, ranges of some sort. And at first I was thinking I could use the built-in range um, type, uh, but in fact, the built-in range type, I can't uh, add a trait to it. So like, it would be nice to have a like from string added to range that would parse these pieces out, but you can't do that because you're adding a trait that isn't yours to a type that isn't yours. And it's like, no, you can't do that. And range gives us a whole lot of stuff we don't really need. So I think we're just gonna make our own type here. Um, and then we can uh, attach the, um, implement the traits that we need on that type and life will be swell. And then we can ask overlapping questions about that type. So I'm gonna actually, and in the problem statement, blah, 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 they call these um, assignments. Um, uh, so we have section assignments. Um, and so I'm gonna use uh, the, that for my naming. So I'm gonna say struct, let's call it section assignment. We'll be really enthusiastic about our names. And um, that's going to have a start, which is going to be a, uh, let's do U size, sure, and an end, which is going to be U size as well. Um, and I think that, do they ever give names to those? Uh, I don't know that they do. No, I think they just sort of let you infer. So we'll say start and end. Um, and now I want to impl from stir for section assignment. And I need to import to get that to be there because I type too fast. And quick fix will give me the missing member. Um, oh, interesting. So I'd forgotten from stir does return an error type. And if we say this is anyhow colon colon error, then that will be useful because we can, um, we'll be able to question mark from stir calls and they'll have anyhow errors. So they'll propagate out, um, properly. And so we want to convert a string. Um, uh, wow, that's ugly. Um, and I really want that to be result. And so let's, I think because I made the type error, anyhow error, I think I can do that. Um, and so we want to parse that string into a range. So we're going to do, um, uh, see, am I going to do this with, uh, yeah, we'll do let um, start and end be um, s dot split once again. And here we're going to split on the dash. Um, and that gives us our two pieces, but we have to, again, um, dot with context format bang. There was no dash in the range. Do, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, S, boom. 
and that then question mark should give me a oh, semicolon oops ah go back over there yeah and this is probably formatted terribly here we go that's better okay so that gives us our two pieces we need to parse both of those to be integers and unfortunately we can't map across tuples and that's one downside of using split once is we can't map across tuples if i had just used split then i could map across the iterator that split returns hmm do i want that instead and then i would next out the two pieces hmm yeah because otherwise oh no well actually no because the parsing is going to generate errors and that's its own kettle of fish um so i think we'll just there's only two of them let's not get too wrapped up in it and we'll say let's start be um start dot parse um and if i s provide a type here then actually use size um parse uh, let's add a context with context format uh couldn't couldn't parse do do ah um start to an int and what's the problem oh it's a closure i always forget to do that yeah there we go and then we'll do the same thing um Ooh. So you could do an enum with start and end, and then do an enum map to get to the section assignment. And then you could assign using indexes, but then the, and the iterator would fit. Hmm. Um, and I don't know the enum map crate. Let us have a quick look. Rust enum map. Uh, so you have an enum and an enum map turns. lets us turn values of the enum into other values and then you can look things up oh. um i think that makes sense here um I am not going to go down this road right now, but maybe we'll come back to it. Actually, I'm going to make a note, though. Um, so let me make a note. I think I'll do that right here. Um, uh, Ikapur at Twitch suggested using the enum map crate um, to make an um, we would make 
an enum with start and end and then use enum map to convert to a section assignment this would uh, let us uh, stick with iterators instead of dropping out here to handle start and end separately. So let's see, you said enum map limit u size, and limit would be an enum with start and end, and we would be mapping from that limit to a u size and then sticking that in the start and end. So maybe a bit heavyweight for here, but I might want to explore it since the enum map crate sounds useful. Boom. Cool. Um, so thank you for the suggestion. And I was not at all familiar with the enum crate or enum map crate. And the, the Rust ecosystem is very rich. There is a lot out there. And I certainly have uh, no claims that I understand or am aware, and probably nobody understands, um, but that I'm aware of anything but the tiniest fraction of the crates that exist. And so suggestions um, are greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, I noticed it said, um, yeah, that it's using an array type so that it's really fast. So that's very interesting. Um, and I don't know that I had any awareness that that was in the world. So I will definitely look into that uh, and make sure I understand that, what that does. Um, so that's kind of nifty. Um, and oh yeah, that needs to be end. Okay. So now we've parsed both our things and um, so we want to, what are we doing? We are uh, boom, boom. Hello. Oh, it, oh yeah, right. It's a result. So this would be the okay, the happy path. Wah, 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 wah. Oops, that, that, me. Okay. So now we have um, the ability to convert between uh, strings and um, uh, ranges. Uh, so we can convert both of these strings to ranges. Now here again, actually I've run into the same problem in some sense. Um, uh, first dot from, no, it's, oh, if I say that I want that to be a section assignment, then I think I can say first dot parse. And I think that's returning a result. And yes. And let second be second dot parse question mark. Semicolon. Brown. Okay. So now we've converted those two guys over. Um, and so now all that's left is to figure out does either contain the other? 
Um, and so we can just say um, return first contains second or second contains first. And then that means we have to implement a contains method on uh, section assignment. Bum, ba -da -bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Fun contains other type self returns bool and uh, to do oh I would need to put an okay around that da -da 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 -da. and Oh, and actually that really probably needs to be, oh, and that needs to be a reference to a self. And that also should be a reference because I don't want to take ownership. And if I don't, what have I done here? Oh, that's because these need to be marked as being references. Hey, there we go. Okay, so now um, one contains the other if, so the first contains the second if self.start less than or equal to other.start and self, let's say other.end less than or equal to self.end. Boom, bop, biddly baddly boo. And I think that takes care of that. And Clippy tells me that could be constant. So fingers crossed, we can try running things. Cargo run minus minus bin day 04 part one. Compile bits. And hey, we got a number. So let's see if that number does a thing. Boom. Submit. Hey, we got the right answer. Go us. So cool. That is nifty. Thank you all for your help. Um, let's see. I should commit. Uh, is there anything I feel like I need to change here? Clippy's happy. Uh, let's run format for fun. And I think we're in good shape. So let's commit. Uh, and then we'll start part two. Uh, 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 stage file. Um, complete day 04 part one. Um, anything interesting to say? Uh, yeah, so I liked using uh, split once when there was just one instance of the delimiter, but it did make it harder to use iterators since you can't iterate over a tuple. Um, Ikepor, Ikepor, Twitch suggested a possible use of enum map, but that seemed a bit complicated for this situation. But doom, but doom. Awesome. Uh, then that's cool. I think we're happy there. Um, and let's go ahead and start part two. Um, 
So it seems like there's still quite a lot of duplicate work plan. Instead, the elves would like to know the number of pairs that overlap at all. Um, uh, okay, so are we o we can overlap by little bits. So five, seven, seven, nine overlaps just by the section seven. Um, so we're just um, extending the notion of overlap to not be entirely contained, but instead allow for um, uh, so really, yeah, so actually where I called overlap, um, that almost really should have been called contains or something. Um, uh, or completely overlaps. Um, yeah, maybe completely overlaps would be a name. Um, completely overlaps. And so, uh, I'm actually then going to amend that previous commit with that name change. Do, 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 and now, um, oh, wraps. Uh, potentially, um, hmm. One reason that I'm hesitating is maybe not a good reason, um, that the use of wrap in Rust is so important and meaningful. Um, using names that look like other things mm, strikes me as maybe something to be careful, at least thoughtful about. Um, uh, but I think I'm going to stick with this because I think I can go from completely overlaps to partially overlaps. And I think that that they're not going to exist in the same code base because I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this. But if they did, I think it would be reasonably clear that there's at least a difference and what kind of difference there might be. Um, and why is it grumpy? Should have a, oh, it's snake case. Duh. Ah, yeah, right. Oh, but then I, sh I didn't use rename, so I didn't get all of them. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Too many ages of Java, um, not dash. We're not in closure. Okay. Now amend the commit one more time because apparently it's going to take me eight times to get this right. Boom. Okay. Now, I'm going to save as uh, part two. Almost could just keep these in the same file, but um, we will rename them. Um, so then completely overlap will become partially overlaps. And then we just need to um, modify the logic down here to handle that partial overlap case. So we, so then we don't really care about contains anymore. This should be, um, oh, <laughs> I would got fun. Always lo lovely to see you whenever you arrive. It's all good. We've got some nice people here. We're working on part two of day four. Um, and I think we're actually fairly close and we'll hopefully move on to day five um, uh, here in a bit. We'll see. Um, so we're at the point of we need to decide if two section assignments. And so my section assignment type is just a got a start and an end. And so uh, I need to know if my two section assignments um, overlap at all. 
And when I did contains, it was nicely symmetric. If I do partially overlapping tests, um, uh, it's a little less clear. Uh, essentially, I want to know if either the left, the start or the end of one of the ranges is inside the first range, then we know that there's some kind of overlap. So we just need to check to see if um, the start and the end of the one are in, if either the start or the end of the one is in the other. So I'm actually going to just turn this into a, an overlaps, get rid of the second piece. Um, no, part one is the fully overlapped. Part two is the partially overlapped. So we're looking for anything where there's at least one shared section. Um, so we're kind of, this was doing the fully overlapped and we're now um, moving to the partially overlapped. Um, so, um, self overlaps other if, um, actually, why don't we imagine that there's a contains? If self contains other dot start or self contains other dot end and then we have fun contains uh, section type u size returns bool uh, and self and I guess that needs to also have in self and so we contain a particular section if self.start is less than or equal to section and section is less than or equal to self.end. And so we're going to check to see if first overlap second um, overlapping is going to be true if self contains the other start, so the other start is in the range somewhere, or the other's end is in the range somewhere. If either of those things is true, then we know that there's overlap of, if nothing else, at least the start or end, respectively, of the other um, section assignment. And then contains just looks to see, are you between the start and end, and it's inclusive in these problems. So we've got less than or equal to on both of them. So fingers crossed that might be a thing. Whoa, hey, um, can this be a const function? And it can, okay, Whew. saved. Um, and so let's try running it. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, part two. It says the number of overlapping is 765. That's bigger than 556, which at least tells us we're going in the right direction because uh, we would expect this number to be larger um, than the other number. So boom, boom. No, we're too low. Interesting. Uh, so let me actually look at the problem statement again and make sure I'm not um, misunderstanding something. Hmm.
Oh, 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 I didn't, I'm only checking one direction, which is why I'm too low. So I'm checking that the first, that either of the ends is inside the first, but I also need to check that either of the ends is inside the second. Because in this example, if three, seven had been the first one, two would not have been anywhere in here and eight would not have been anywhere in here. Yeah, so I think that's exactly the problem. Thank you, Neg Borsa. Um, and welcome to the chat or to the stream, to whatever this is called. I don't know. It's the internet. We do stuff. Um, so I do have to actually do both of them, which that's a little annoying. I feel like I'm repeating something somewhere, but I can, I think, just um, now my name, I think isn't good anymore after spending all that time agonizing over names i'm not sure that's well that should be or not and yeah um oh so uh yeah thanks neg so you're right about the or um why are those cons because clippy told me to um so they can be const because if their arguments are, because section assignment, let's see, how do, what do I say? Um, why are, um, uh, okay, now rust const method, what are the rules? Um, uh, so that's com compile time constants. No. Uh, this marks a function as being callable in the blah, blah, blah. Um, constant finish restricts. See reference. Well, that doesn't really help a whole lot. Um, ah. So the trick here is they don't modify the object. So if, if the, the thing that we're calling, uh, yeah, overlaps doesn't change this and it doesn't change that, which means that, and it doesn't apply here, but if we had a a value, um, a known value for first and a known value for second, we could actually call overlaps and the compiler could evaluate that expression and know that it would be constant and replace that call with that value if it wanted to. Um, that doesn't apply here at all, um, but it, would, it gives the compiler some flexibility that it might not have otherwise. Um, and I did it just because Clippy was like, hey, you should make that a constant. And I'm like, go Clippy, I'll do what you tell me. Um, uh, so uh, I think that's the issue there. And so fingers crossed this works. I might want to come back and change some names, but let's, um, 876, so it did get bigger. That's a good sign. Um, and I bet we've spent a minute. And that was the problem. Okay. Now, mm, I don't really like the names now. Um, but I'm not sure what I think would be a better name. Um, because you feel like overlap should be symmetric, that A overlaps B is the same as B overlaps A. Um, and our overlaps does not have that property. Um, I mean, it could be something like contains endpoint. Uh, contains endpoint of um And then this may be, well, we can leave that alone. Um, so here we're saying the first contains an endpoint of the second or 
The second contains an endpoint of the first. Um, yeah, I can live with that. Um, and then let's call that a win, I guess. Let's commit and press on. We'll go to day five. And it's only quarter to three. You know, all kinds of time. This is very exciting. Um, I think that was, I think to be honest, that was an easier problem than uh, some of the previous ones, which was odd, but there we are. Um, also, maybe I'm just sort of getting used to a pattern of, of doing things, but um, yeah, day five could be super exciting here. Um, so, um, finish uh, part, part two of day 04. Do I have anything super exciting to say? I guess I could mention that I got this wrong at first for not realizing, forgetting implied that I once knew um, that I needed to call first.contains endpoint of twice once in each direction. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything much else to say. Um, oh, if I do the parsing, day five is going to take a while. Uh -huh. If I don't do the parsing, that implies that there's some other way to deal with the parsing. Um, I don't know. Let's have a look at day five and we'll find out what that might mean. Oh, actually, let me... Um, uh, merge that in. And, and then make a new branch for day five. Oops, I wanted to be here. Um, rebase. Uh, let's do that. Back. Whoa. Oh, poop. Yeah, there are going to be some issues. I'm not going to deal with that. Abort merge. Abort, abort, abort. Um, let's just make a branch off of main called day five, and I'll deal with my get issues later. Um, because we don't really need, uh, that. So let's look at the next problem. Return to your advent calendar. So we're getting some little picture. Um, supply stacks. The expedition can depart as soon as the final supply has been unloaded from the ship. Supplies are stored in stacks of marked crates, but because the needed supplies are buried under many other crates, the crates need to be rearranged. The ship has a giant cargo crane capable of moving crates between stacks. To ensure none of the crates get crushed or fall over, the crane operator will rearrange them in a series of carefully planned steps. After the crates are rearranged, the desired crates will be at the top of each stack. The elves don't want to interrupt the crane operator during this delicate procedure, but they forgot to ask her which crate will end up where, and they want to be ready to unload them as soon as possible so they can embark. They do, have, however, have a drawing of the starting stacks and the rearrangement procedure Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. I can see that the parsing here is going to be gross. Um, now, Wagafa, you said if you do the parsing in a way that implied to me like there was a way out of that. I don't know what that way would be. I mean, parsing these lines is no biggie. Parsing these lines kind of gross. Um, uh... Oh, okay. Uh, and I don't think I want to do that. That sounds kind of gross. Um, so we'll we'll be bold and we'll be daring and we will attempt to parse this mess. Um, uh, and as long as there are never double letters, like there's a fixed number of characters at every position, this doesn't seem completely implausible. Um Um, so we're going to have to, um, ah, well, that helps. Um, uh, and, um, and then we just have to interpret these instructions and move things around. Let's come to that in a second. Let's get our input. Um, okay. So there's nine stacks. 
and we know how many stacks there are, and I might hard code that in. I mean, there you could you could be more general. Well, I guess yeah, you could be more general and say you don't know how many stacks there are and then figure that out when you got down to this line. But I'm just going to cook in nine. I think that'll simplify my life a little bit. Um, so we need to input uh, day 05 input. And then we also need day 05 part one dot rs and i'm gonna steal uh the start of this because it simplifies my life so this would be day five and um yeah, it would be. Um, and if there were, like, it gets weird. If you go past nine, now you need two characters for the stack size label, which then changes the spacing up here. Um, and if you allowed yourself to go past Z, then things wouldn't fit in a single column. So they clearly made a number of assumptions uh, to make it, not as terrible as it could be, for whatever that's worth. Um, so, uh, and so this setup is just not going to be right. We're really going to have to read the stacks, and then we're going to have to, um, process all the instructions so this structure isn't going to be right um hmm. now another question is do we hack in the fact that there are nine lines here and take the first nine lines off of the input or do we read until we get to a line that starts with a space. Um, and I think there is a take while, right? Rust take while. Yeah. Um, so we could use take while. Um, Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. If I split by double return, then I'm splitting the top part into the, and the bottom part. I can parse and handle those separately. Oh, that's a better, I like that solution. Yes, thank you. So actually, I'm going to want to read here. So let me grab my little contents bit and say, I want to put that here. Um, and I'm going to split, and I can actually split once again, let, um, stack config and, um, uh, instructions be contents.split once, oops, that's going to have to be a string because there's two of them, uh, uh, boom, and I'm going to need to uh, what, 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 uh, lots of noise. Um, oh, this is input file because I'm not calling it in a function anymore. So that's that and that. And now. Yeah, we need options, so I need to, uh, with context to, with context, ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da, format, bang. Hmm, actually, I don't want to put the whole output. 
Um, so we'll just say context, skip the whole format business, and say there was no blank line in the input. Question mark, semicolon. Okay. Now I can split up parsing the stack config and parsing and processing the instructions. So we want to have some stack. Um, actually, do I want to call it that or do I want to call it? Um, let me look at the problem statement again. What do they call things? Um, supplies are stored in stacks. So I could just call it stacks plural. And that would not be an insane name. Uh, so struct stacks, you know, and this is going to be parse stacks, stack config, uh, and that probably is going to need to return a result. Um, I'm going to get rid of this line here. I'm going to uh, rest that should be okay. Um, Fun parse stacks. Oh, actually, I probably want. Uh, I could just impl from stir for stacks, and then this actually could be um, stack config dot parse. If we say what stacks, the stacks is of type stacks. Uh, Got to import. Come on. And then we have to add the missing method and the error type. So the error is anyhow error. And then this can just be simplified to results of self, boom. Okay. Oh, we got hash set in here. We're not likely to use that, I don't think. So let's get rid of that. Um, and I don't know if we'll use bail or not. I'll leave it there for now. We can clean it up later. Um, Okay, so now we get the fun and exciting problem of parsing the stacks. So we should have, so we want to call lines on this. And the last line will just be the numbers. And I really can ignore that. I don't really need the last line. Um, and the, but it's the previous lines that I care about. Um, and so what do I want my data structure to be? I want some kind of mapping from stack number to some sort of stack. Um, I could use a map, but since, I know how many stacks there are. I could also just use an array. So maybe I want an array of nine stacks. So I want a stack, oops, wrong direction. I want it to be here and I want it to go there. So I want a stack to be um, uh, an array of nine stack. Um, and that means I have to define stack, struct, st 
stack and a stack. Actually, do I need a stack type or should I just use a vec of? Probably could just use a vec. Vec of char. And they're always single characters, so I can get away with that. So I've got an array of nine vectors of characters. And I want... So a question is, do I want the... Um, I guess I want to go back to here. Things happen on the top. So we move one thing from stack two to stack one. So D moves from here to here. Um, and so it would be, and what is, what is rust, rust vector push? Because there is a thing, right? Um, push, uh, push and pop. Which direction do these take things? So pushing puts them at the end and popping presumably takes them off the uh, pop. Hello. Pop takes them off the end and Now they only do one thing at a time and the pro oops, sorry, the problem statement, we need to sometimes move multiple things. So like three from stack one to stack three. Oh, but they, they reverse in order. So we are actually using push pop one at a time. So this would be, we could pop the D push it onto three, pop the end, push it on three, pop the Z. So push and pop being at the end makes sense. Okay. So then we need to parse things so that the top is the end. Um, so we can't parse and put this in the vector first because then it ends up at the front and we want V here to be at the end. So we basically want to process the rows from the last to the first. Uh, so we want to iterate kind of backwards over the rows. Um, and then for each row, we'll sort of look for characters at various positions. And if the character is not a space, then we'll push it. And if it is a space, we'll ignore it. Okay, I think that's a plan. Um, so, so we've got a string slice actually, so we want to call lines um, and what is that? Oh, it's S. There's why I wasn't getting any kind of completion. Okay, so now we have lines and yeah, so it doesn't do anything, but yeah, we're there. So we get lines and we want to reverse the iterator, which I think we can do, right? Um, here's iterator, is there a reverse? Rev. So we can rev an iterator. Cool. Um, dot rev and then we can actually let me what if I just say let um, actually I probably do want these to be um Well, frog. I just want to. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to. 
uh, skip the last line. Uh, so we're actually going to have to call next, not next. Um, so we can advance by. Um, is there an alternative to advancing that just goes ahead by one? Uh, oh, I could drop. Um, is that a thing? I thought that was a thing. I don't see it. Uh, oh, but they don't call it drop because a skip. So I could skip. What's the difference between uh, skipping and advancing? So skip returns the iterator and then advance by. Oh, advance by returned a result. Oh, and it's also nightly only, so we're doing skip. Okay, so I want to skip one. Um, which, actually, if I thought about what Neg Morsa said, you used the word skip. You probably actually meant the word skip, uh, not slip. Um, and skip does take an argument. So skip one. Um, and I'm not really using this, so I don't know why, what I was thinking there. Whatever, go away. Um, and... Uh, so we can skip one and now I need to process those lines yielding a stack at the end and I think that uh, try from no, what, what, that what, trifold might be a good thing to use again um, because I'm using some sort of fold or reduce to collect up the lines and end up with a stacks object um, uh, is the goal. Um, and so trifold, um, which takes an initial value so we're going to want to start with a empty stacks. Probably would be nice if we had either default or new. I wonder if default would do the right thing. And then a closure that takes the stack state both so stacks and a line and does a thing uh, and it's going to return let's just say it returns stacks for now which will clearly be wrong but um, oh and that would have to be okay stacks um, So can we derive default? Good question. Derive default. Don't know the answer to that question. Hey, looks like we can. And that derive would almost certainly give us empty vex here. So that shouldn't be that bad. Um, why are you grumpy? Um, Uh, let's not think about that right now. Um, now, actually, do I want to... I, I think I want to convert the lines. I don't really want um, a string. Do I want a string here? Actually, I probably do. Well, hmm. Yes. I probably do. The other option would be to map some sort of parsing function that has 
the characters that I care about in it. But actually, I could do that. And then I would just have spaces where uh, the stacks end. Um, yeah, let's actually do that. Let's parse or let's map. So before we get here, let's map some function that uh, uh, is uh, extract stack elements. Um, and then we're going to need to define that. Fn extract stack elements, which takes a line type stir slice and returns a vec of char. And I don't really, I don't think I'm going to need that to be a result. I don't see why, because I'm just going to be using indexing to get the relevant characters. So I don't think I need. Um, so I think I can say 0 to 10 dot into iter or iter looks like into iter is what I want. I mean, I can't, I do have to do that, right? Map. Oh, no, I don't have to do that. I can just say map. Okay, fine. So for each position, ooh, I don't want, z actually, so let's, let's make this, I think, a little more semantically obvious. Let's say zero to nine inclusive uh, dot map. And what are we going to map? We are going to map a function that takes a position and returns line, and I can use square brackets on lines, um, I was actually just going to put the spaces in. Um, and so let's see, I have, I need to add one. Oh, well, I'm starting at one. So I need to take that and add one, two, three, four times one less than the value. Oh, I'm actually better off going zero to nine. That, that one to nine is just a terrible idea. So zero to nine, and then we're gonna have one plus four times position because we advance by four characters. One, two, three, four. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So we advanced by four characters, so hopefully this will give us the right character. Um, and then, yeah, I'll just have a vector with spaces in it. So like this row here is going to be V space B space 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 F. Um, so if I index V uh, this position zero, I'll get V. Position one, I'll get space. Position two, I'll get B. Um, and so if I map that, then I think that actually, uh, oh, we cannot be indexed by integer. Ah, uh, so I think I need to do dot chars. Well, that's annoying. Um, and I probably want to do that once, not do it over and over again. So let line be line dot chars. And then it's not happy.
Oh, because that's a charge here is basically an iterator. Surely, can I really not? Um, Rust struct uh, slice index. Um, So I can do slices to get pieces out, but I can't do individual chunks or a single character. That seems weird, annoying. So I don't know, so I don't, let's look at this error again. I don't understand. Type stir cannot be indexed by integer. The trait slice index stir is not implemented for integer. Use chars nth or bytes nth. Hmm. Well. Oh. Right. So it's the. Um, so we do need. Uh, let. Um. And it would be dot nth. So the, um, yeah, that works. Except uh, I'm missing a close parent. Or not. Um, I bet nth returns something. Yeah, it returns an option. Yeah, so we'll have to question mark our way out of that. Um, oh, but. Uh, which means we'll have to collect and then question mark. Yeah, so um, I characters don't equal bytes and uh, brackets was giving me the byte position um, and uh, I need characters instead of um, uh, bytes now in this instance they're the same because everything's just straight up ascii um, there's no unicode in any of this so we could i think which is partly what you're suggesting with Gaffa, we could move between them comfortably but i'm going to go ahead and do the, the the chars i think that's probably the safer better thing um and so i think that'll be cool um and then we want to collect uh, question mark um, and that didn't do the right thing um, I thought though if I had a an option that Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I know. But, well, just a sec. I thought that question, this was going to give me, apparently not. What am I doing wrong? Oh, but this wouldn't be a that. It would be a result that. And no. Uh. Oh, I know, because I've got options here, I need to turn those into results. That's the problem, okay. And then I think I'll be able to collect in a second. Um, uh, yes, we do have to worry about Chinese and Arabic and Hebrew and Thai and Vietnamese elves. Um, and yeah, so nine is fixed in our example. We have exactly nine stacks. And so I'm hacking that nine into, in fact, actually, let's even say const num stacks uh, u size equals nine and then use num stacks here. Um, I want to actually 
just, you know, we could be fancier about that because we could, especially since we were reversed and we have this line first, we could try to look at the last value, yada, yada. But if there were two character indices, it would mess a whole bunch of things up. So um, uh, I'm going to just let it go. And then, oh, yes, right. Good catch. Num stacks. Well done. Thank you. Um, okay, so I need to convert that option into a result, I think, so that I can then collect properly. So I'm going to throw in a with context um, format bang. Um, uh, uh, couldn't get character for stack um, position plus one, which I don't think I can do in curly braces. So I think I need to put that there and then pause plus one. And now that's going to be uh, a result and it doesn't like expected, oh, because <laughs> we haven't returned anything. Let's throw a to do in here. So that's a range. Oh no, that's not that. Um, uh, found result vec char. So why can't I put a question mark there? Oh, because I don't have this returning. No. I don't want to return. I mean, I want, oh no, that only works if I have this be a result. That's my problem. I can't use question mark fun if I don't return a result. And now it doesn't like, oh, now it does, I don't want the question mark. Ha ha, there we go. Okay, so I think, and let's actually clean the spacing up here. Hello, is it too? Wonderful to see you, even if you're late. It's a day. We all will do what we will do. Um, uh, and we've got half an hour. We're um, on problem five. So we're dealing with the parsing these things at the moment, which are initial states for stacks. Um, which apparently has been uh, the bane of many people's existence. Um, so we're dealing with that. Um, and I think actually we just got, so extract stack elements, I think now probably does the right thing. Um, might be worth writing a test for that though, actually. Um, uh, CFG test. Uh, mod extract stack elements test uh, use super bang or star um, fun uh, test fun um, extract uh, so we want to call that result the extract stack elements and we want to give it let's give it one of these guys let's give it like this one here you know and let's actually give that a line let line be you know um line Oops, I need a semicolon there. And now we 
assert eek bang ah ah help help can't type um nth consumes does it Oh, you're right. Ah, that's not fun. Okay, so this, this test will fail. Good thing I'm writing a test. And then we will come to that space. Is it two spaces there? No, just one space and then another space. Okay. F, C, space, D, G. So that's what, oh, and it should have been a vec. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, vec, bang. This is ugly. Probably was a better way to do this, where I just converted the string to this vector, but I'm going to be brutal. And it's a test, and that'll be fine. So that should work, but will fail. Um, because, whoa, doesn't even compile, I don't think. Um, help, help. Uh, what have I done? Oh, well, I my syntax is completely borked. Okay. Uh, oh, that's the... So I need two arguments there. And, oh, that should be dot unwrap. Because I don't care about the error okay so that works what is grumpy here uh okay so we were still trying to do this business i'm going to just comment all this out for now and oh and this doesn't even make sense comment that out for now now I think, oh, no, we got a little red thing. Not borrow line is mutable. It's not declared. Oh, seriously? Come on. So, okay, line. And, oh, because line is essentially an iterator. It needs to be mutable, which would have given us the hint about the consumption in some ways. But let's be brutal um, just to watch it fail. It's always fun to make code fail. Um, and, uh, run the test and the test doesn't need fail. We, um, get a runtime. So couldn't get a character for stack five, uh, because we, yeah, we over consumed and that yeah, that pushed us, we pushed off the end. So, oh well, that's not gonna work. <sighs> so, I could pour a suggested collecting those into a vac or using as bytes. Hmm. Hmm, what do I think I like better? Let's just collect into a vec, actually, I think. And, oh, I need open close. Okay. Now I ought to be able to use square brackets. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. 
Oh, and now I don't need to have my with contacts because that isn't gonna ever be a thing. And I don't get a result anymore. I just get a vac. Um, and then this is just going to be a vec, which means I can now get rid of the turbo fish because it can infer that from the return type. Um, and now this doesn't need to be mutable anymore. So um, you couldn't do the line.nth because uh, line.nth was a consuming action. And so line, when we just had dot charge, was an iterator, not a vec or something kind of stable. And so when you did dot nth, um, you consumed... Uh, So I think the, the 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 trick would have been like we probably could have still done it, but I was consuming one and then five and then nine and then thirteen. I was adding four every time. And I think you just needed I think the trick would have been to just go ahead four instead of like I was always going from zero to the place I wanted to be, forgetting that the starting point was moving forward all the time and I just wanted to go ahead four. Um, and so I think we could have made it work with the, without turning it into a vec, um, but uh, yeah, so I think, ah, yeah, so, as you said, Wagafa, I didn't get what you were saying at first. Yeah, that star pause, that was the problem. If I didn't do that, then this probably could have worked. Um, and we might, let's actually, let's run the test to see if this works. Uh, it does not. Um, it doesn't even compile because this doesn't return results anymore. Um, oh, this, uh, okay. And the test now passes. Um, and we could, um, yeah, we could avoid the collecting if we just went ahead by four every time and took care of the one once at the front. Um, but then we have to bring back all the air handling that I just made go away. And do I care about that? Um, not a lot. I mean, we are only talking nine lines, right? I mean, obviously the performance issues here are meaningless because of the time, the, the amount of data that we're having to process. So I'm just going to leave it be, but I will make a note, um, uh, an alternative approach, alternative approach would be to just do line.chars and um, line dot nth um, four for each uh, stack in the mapping uh, that would avoid um, creating the vector for a line uh, that we have 
at the moment. Um, so, but I'm going to just let that be. So this seems to work, right? So we run the test again because that makes me happy. Yes. Um, and so now where we leave off, um, we have, uh, okay, right here, this is where we were doing stuff. Um, so we had all of our lines, so that's this group of lines here. We were parsing them into lines we reverse that we skipped the first one so we're going to go from the bottom up we've skipped this what's line nine here as not being not having any useful information we've mapped extract stack elements so we should now have a vector of characters and then we're going to try to start with an default set of stacks which are all empty and then for each one of those uh well we're going to take that we're going to process one of these vectors of characters to update that set of stacks and return that and then uh that would be then the new initial stack state so we need to do something other than okay stacks here um i'm gonna say does this work if i put a it does happy day um now in fact i want to loop oh uh, i want to loop or map or something over the vectors in this um, array. Um, probably don't want filtering because I don't want to, I've got to be careful not to remove the spaces. I just want to, when I see one, still increment the index in the um, um, into which stack I'm in. Um, now I know, okay, for each, calls a closure now, but that doesn't give me the index and I'm gonna need the index as well. Ah, enumerate gives me the index. And then I could for each on that. Oh, and I could filter out, oh, hey. So actually, Nick Vorsa, I could use this model to filter out the spaces and I'd still have the pairs. And so for each pair, I would know that I would need to map. Um, oh, and then I would just fold. I could just fold over or reduce over the pairs and get, because at each point I want a new state. Um, yeah. Now I end up making a million states this way when I could have just had one mutable thing and then banged on it over and over again. Um, kind of feel like maybe. Let's try this. We can uh, wrestle with it um, if we don't like it. So I have okay stacks goes away so i want line dot enumerate dot filter and i'm going to get um position um and character and for each of those I want to remove things so I want to keep things filter is keeping things right um, yeah filter keeps things so I want to keep things that are not equal to space 
And that's going to give me a bunch of pairs where I don't have spaces. And now I want to... I think I can just say full or reduce. Why is it? Nothing's completing because why? Oh, because it doesn't know what's going on here. Can I fix that by putting a to-do here? Aha! Uh -huh. So now we're getting stuff. Oh, I've got to do dot iter dot enumerate okay uh ah now good we're getting things can't compare re uh, can't compare reference to a char so i need to star it now we should be able to get reduce doesn't start out with a starting value so i think i need fold which does start out with a starting value so fold and i want to give it stacks as the starting point and then for each one of those stacks i want to have uh stacks and um I see and for each one of those pairs I want to return a new stack um, so I want to take stacks dot stacks bracket I dot push C. Okay. I want to need star C here. But our expected stacks found unit. Oh, does push return unit? It does. So then I would have to say stacks and a semicolon here. Because that's side effecting. Ah, now, a whole lot of weird going on. Um, And that's because we're not returning we're not returning an error anywhere. Do I need trifold? Maybe I don't. I was thinking I did, but I don't think I do. I think this is just fold. Ah, now we get the problem. So stacks needs to be mutable. And I think I might have a problem here in that I don't think this is going to be mutable. I don't think I can just... There? Oh. I can apparently say it's mutable. Really? Well, that's interesting. And, but there's no other mutability that's pushes out into the world I guess not because we're making new things so this does not need to be mutable because it's passed in as the initial value here and then each step inside has to be mutable so in theory then this is uh 
Well, so that's what I'm a little worried about is that I feel like I'm probably making a lot of stacks. Um, so let's actually think through. We start with a default stack here as the initial value. A, def a default set of stacks is the initial value. A set of stacks get passed in here. Those stacks get passed in here as the initial value of this fold. And then that gets passed as a mutable value to this function. So we don't end up making copies. But I feel like somehow it's cheating that this needs to be marked as mutable so that we can pass a mutable thing in here so that we would have a mutable thing there. So I'm a little confused about that, to be honest with you, why that even works. Um, and it says I never use I. Oh yeah, I don't, not in filter. Okay, so that's actually completely correct. Um, so you're passing ownerships of stacks into the closure, so you have to return it at the end. Oh. So this closure is taking ownership. And if I made this a reference, oh, um, and then this, that means that a knit's going to have to be a reference and that's going to have to be a reference and that still doesn't does that does that now force this to be mutable yeah so i don't know I, I'm going to undo all that reference stuff because I'm not sure that was. I mean, so I guess the central question is do and mute on stacks, but no and mute on the closure parameter. So not here. But why do I need it anywhere? You, so you're saying I need it here. But I don't know why I need, so then I would need to say mute here. Yeah. But I guess it wasn't clear to me, like if I didn't do that, what was the, where, where was the copy happening? Because the whole point of doing that would be to avoid a copy somewhere. And so what, I, what, what I'm not clear on is where the copy, if there is one, was happening. You move stacks into the fold by... So I move it here, but that doesn't mean I'm copying it. I'm just passing ownership of it. Um... And as long as I'm not copying it, do I care? Um, yeah. So if there aren't any implicit copies, then I and I and my stacks thing is not doesn't implement any copying stuff, copy or clone. 
So I don't think I'm making any copies of anything. So I don't know why I would want or need to make this ampersand mute here. Um, it's not clear to me that there's a downside. Okay, so I can just leave it alone. Well, that's cool. Um, that's kind of nifty. Um, and so that means, I think, that if I put an OK around something, um, oh, 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 OK, so fold. No, that should be returning a stacks, right? Because this is returning a stacks. And so if I get rid of that and get rid of that and put an OK around it, why are you grumpy? Oh, because it thinks this is going to be a result. Why do you think this will be a result? I don't want to. Re oh, because it thinks this is returning a result. Do I need a result then? Maybe I don't. Maybe I can just make this self. When I got rid of the trifold, I think maybe I didn't need the. Oh no, it really wants yeah, that. That's cooked into. Um, so if I just put an OK around all of this, and um, yeah, from stir requires that I return a result. Uh, what, where are we getting? Oh, I think this semicolon is my problem. Yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I don't. The importance of semicolons in returning, having spent much of at least my imperative universe having explicit returns, um, I find myself still forgetting that I need to be careful about the semicolons. So that compiles. Do I believe that that's right? That's a fascinating question. I certainly think I want to test. Here it. We got eight minutes left. So let's do a test quick. Mod uh, stacks from stir test. Boom, ba doom, ba doom. Use superstar um, test. Yeah, that was right. Uh, FN test from stir. Boom. Uh, oh. Um, I'm going to need, oh, that's going to be kind of an ugly test. Uh, let's do, hmm. oh, good catch. Thank you. Uh, except the sample input, what am I doing? Um, the sample input, I've got nine baked in everywhere. And now the sample input uses three. Um, I could have a bunch of empty stacks. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Um, just put, because really all I need to do is, oh, and I don't even need to put stuff out here because I never really look at the contents of that line. So actually, I don't think it's a problem. I don't think it's a problem. I think we just would expect to get this is our first three stacks, and I think we're good. So I think we can do that. I think that um, let input be boom. Now I want um, 
I need to be careful about my spacing here. Is there some sort of like block string thing in Rust? Multi-line string literal. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, literals can be broken across several lines. Oh. Okay. Um, so, thank you for the follow, Nick Borsa. Um, so I think that I could just say... Um, and then I'm going to want, because I really care about the, so I think I need to, and what's the actual input here? Make sure I'm looking at the right thing. And, oh, it's blank in. Oh, and actually my semicolon, my, ah, okay, so that, no, but I'm going to end up with a blank in the front that I don't want. Don't really care about this. So if I just get rid of those spaces, I think that'll work. Use raw string literal. Oh, maybe this sounds like a thing. Rust, raw string literal. Maybe that's what I was shooting for. Um, oh, look at that. R hash quote. Look at that. That definitely looks like a better plan. R hash quote. And then I need quote hash semicolon quote hash aha now things are exactly as they should be well done that was helpful okay so that and then I guess we could bring this back to there or something, assuming it's going to ignore what happens on those lines. Um, I hope. I mean, that's the question is, is this new line going to matter and is this space going to matter? And I don't know the answer to that question. Um, we'll find out. We will find out. So we're going to say um let stacks be uh input dot parse in actually we'll just say this is of type stacks and the space there and i don't want to space there <sighs> oh that returns a Results, so we'll say unwrap because we don't really care right now. And now, oh, I could implement some kind of debug thing, but it's two minutes before the end. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't really have a great sense of what raw strings do. Um, Oh, so it talks about escaping things. And we didn't really care about that. Oh. Yeah, so really I don't think the raw string literal bought us anything. Probably could have, should have just stayed with um, that guy there. And let's hope for the best. Um, I could make like a debug thing or something. Oh, but I guess I really just want to print stuff. So, or I don't even want to print stuff. I want to test stuff. So, I want um, assert equal to st 
stacks dot stacks bracket zero dot len. So we start with just asserting the lengths are right. Uh, three stacks dot stacks one dot len and assert equal bang one stacks dot stacks two dot len boom 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 okay let's try running this test run and it failed why did it fail it failed because computers hate me um panicked at index out of bounds the length is 11 but the index is 13 on line 26 oh 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 oh, oh, oh. um that yeah, this is going to try to get all the extra pauses so I would need, for my test, I'm going to need a bunch of spaces at the end of every line. And I can just put a whole bunch of random spaces. It doesn't really matter what the actual number of spaces is, um, as long as it's enough. But it does mean that if in the input, oh no, they all go out to the end. Oh, that's very convenient of them. I don't have to worry about one of these ending early. Okay, well, that's kind of nice. But I do have to worry about this ending early. Hey, it passed! That would be very cool. Um, oh, yeah, so actually, um, I would typically strip those spaces, like blank space. I mean, because they're in a string, I don't know if the ID would strip those or not. But yeah, that I, I, I mean, I'm usually really pretty aggressive about removing unnecessary white space from ends of lines and ends of files. So that could be an issue. It didn't happen here, so yay. Um, but uh, that, yeah, would definitely be a concern. Um, and then let's assert equal bang that vec bang um d e c ah, m is stacks stacks one and oh i don't need a dot there let's see if that works as well and it does not um oh uh yeah we wanted uh so push and pop were we we had this conversation that was here so push and pop are at the back. And so we need, and we're pushing popping here. So this needs to be at the back. So it should be MCD, not DCM. Okay. So my test is wrong. And the code, I think, is right. Yes. Yay! Well, that's exciting. Okay. Well, it's four minutes after four o'clock. I should wrap up. Uh, people think I have other things to do in life, strangely enough. I don't know what that's about. This is clearly more fun than whatever else. Oh, so I've actually got some, let me uh, do a little cleaning up here. We have some clippy warnings that I should probably try to address. Um, I don't know if we're gonna ever need bail, so let's take that out. Um, and then 86, it's not happy because we haven't used instruction yet. That's understandable, we haven't even gotten there. And this is, hasn't been used. That's understandable. Um, 
Line 51. Um, unnecessary structure name repetition. Oh, yeah. This is in stack, so that should be self. Um, that makes sense. Okay. Everything else is understandable and will get cleaned up. Um, oh, there's also a bunch of unwraps that I want to deal with. Maybe they're only in the test code. Wah, wah, unwrap. So that's in a test. Oh, there's just the one and it's in a test. Okay. I'll let that go and we'll press on. So um, I think we've got the first half of the parsing done. I think the second half of the parsing is pretty straightforward because um, we can just split on spaces and grab the things at position one, three, and five, parse those to numbers, and then we have to model the moving stuff around, which also doesn't seem hard. Um, yeah, you were right, Wagafa. <laughs> Because we worked on the parsing for an hour and 15, 20 minutes um, and haven't gotten to the um, actual like doing of the problem yet. Um, but this actually shouldn't be too bad. So fingers crossed we can get through the moving part in less than a full session and then be able to start day six. So we might still stay a little ahead. Um of the game. We'll see. Um, so thank you all. Uh, that was super cool. And I really appreciate everybody's feedback and suggestions. Um, I will be streaming in tomorrow from 10 to noon on the thank you to both of you uh, on uh, Rust Evolution Computation, um, where we'll hopefully get pipelining to actually work. Um, uh, Izitsu and I were having some conversations in the Discord and might do something fancy with like uh, enumerations with multiple uh, variants to handle with a function composition with different numbers of arguments. Um, if you're talking about the evolution computation, actually all my code's public. So let's see. Um, uh, GitHub dot Nick McPhee. Um, so the let's repos. Uh, the advent of code and the Rust GA are both right here. Um, I'll put links in the chat in case anybody wants to have a look at any of this. You are welcome to do so. Um, uh, the Rust GA, I think we're currently working in the generalized child maker branch is where the action's happening at the moment there. Um, and in this, I've been trying to do a branch for each day. Um, I need to merge three and four in properly and commit five. I'll do that offline. Um, uh, so we will maybe do something kind of funky with enums and function composition tomorrow. So that'll be a trip. Um, and then uh, Tuesday, uh, 10 to noon, uh, more Rust EC. And if you want to come back to uh, advent of code that's going to be Wednesday um, from seven to nine and all times central standard time at the moment um, and uh, I hope that's those times aren't terrible for you um, so thank you all I lots of good discussion a lot of good suggestions um, things that I learned and that's always cool um, so I appreciate it I've, great deal. I will let everybody go and do their happy thing. And I will talk to you folks later. Goodbye.